In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I turn this boring skate clip into a video game inspired edit, just like this. Now I'm gonna be using Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and After Effects for today's tutorial. But with that being said, let's jump right into it. To get started, I have this clip of me doing a kickflip here, which I shot on a tripod at 60 frames per second, so I can slow it down a bit, which is what we're gonna do first. Now, if you're a skateboarder or maybe just an After Effects user, then you're probably familiar with the term ramped slow-mo. Here's how to do that. So with my raw clip and my After Effects composition, I'm going to right click it and go up to time and select enable time remapping. Then I'll set keyframes for time remap at the start and end of the trick I wanna slow down. Then select both of those keyframes and head over to this graph editor icon here. If your graph doesn't look like mine, right click and make sure edit speed graph is selected. Now you'll see our two keyframes in the graph editor. Just click and drag the second one to the right in order to slow down our clip in that section as much as needed. You can play it back while adjusting the graph to see how slow the clip actually is. Then we can use these little handles to ramp our speed graph. So this is going to gradually slow down your clip so it's not as jarring of a speed change, hence the name ramp slow-mo as we're creating a gradual ramp from regular speed to slow motion. Now, once we're happy with our ramp slow-mo, we can export it by going up to composition and then add to render queue. From there, just hit this output module drop-down menu and select the lossless preset to export the highest quality possible. What we're gonna do now is bring that exported clip right back into After Effects so we can remove it from the background as we'll need that for one of our upcoming steps. So just drop it in a composition and then double click it to open it up. Then select the Roto Brush tool and use it to paint over our subject like so. If we need to remove some of our selection, just hold Alt or Option until our brush turns red and then we can paint some more, but now it will remove our selection as opposed to adding to it. You're gonna want to make sure your rotoscope selection is as clean as possible. So make sure to spend some extra time on this section for the best results. Now, once we're happy, we can hit freeze and After Effects will use its magic to remove the background from the entire clip. So we have something that looks like this. All right, so check this out. As a video editor, I'm constantly looking for high quality assets that I can grab at a moment's notice. All right, yes, you caught me, this is an ad, but seriously, stay with me for a second because this could actually benefit you. Instead of creating everything I need from scratch, I can just head over to motionelements.com and find pretty much any asset I'll ever need. They have over 14 million free and paid digital stock assets from videos, Premiere and After Effects templates, royalty-free music, sound effects, and so much more. Imagine it being 2024 and you're still wasting time creating a texting conversation from scratch when you could have just downloaded one from Motion Elements. Editing is only getting more streamlined, so if you don't wanna fall behind, then check out motionelements.com and use code JustinSaran9 for 70% off your first month when you sign up for an unlimited subscription plan and gain unlimited access to over 14 million stock elements. Now, what we're gonna do next is open up our ramp slow-mo clip in Premiere Pro. And with our playhead at the start of our sequence, I'm going to export the frame as a TIFF file by hitting this icon here. Now locate that TIFF file and what we're gonna do is open it up in Photoshop. Once we're in Photoshop, we're gonna want to select the crop tool from our tool menu and change our dimensions up here from 1920 by 1080, which is a horizontal dimension. And we just wanna flip it to 1080 by 1920, which is a vertical dimension optimized for social media or vertical video. So we'll hit this double arrow icon to flip the width and height dimensions. And then we'll just scale up the size of our canvas so we can fit the exported frame nicely in the center of our new canvas like this. Now from here, we can input our own custom prompt or just hit generate and let Photoshop auto fill in the empty space. But let me show you a nice little hack if you aren't super comfortable writing dynamic prompts yet. Freaking idiot. <sighs> so we can go to a site like runwayml.com, which has a text prompt to image generator feature amongst other tools. And what we can actually do is borrow the prompts from some of their examples and tweak them to be relevant to what we want to generate in Photoshop. Then we can just use that modified prompt and input it into our generative expand prompt box back in Photoshop. And you'll notice now we have much more dynamic results. Now, if we want to make any more additional tweaks to our generation, we can use the lasso tool over here to select sections of the frame and tweak them using the prompt box like so. I find this works really well if you want to remove certain objects from your frame. Now, once we're happy, we can just save that as a PSD file and head back to Premiere Pro. Now back in Premiere, we're going to open up our ramp slow-mo clip 
on the layer above our PSD file and our timeline and make sure to adjust the scale and position so that it lines up perfectly with our background layer. Then we're going to quickly mask around our raw footage, making sure to feather the mask so that we have the PSD file and our ramped slow-mo clip seamlessly blended into one clip. Now we're going to import the rotoscope version of our ramped slow-mo clip and we'll throw that on a layer above everything else to act as a sort of cover to hide certain parts of our original background. Now, if we play it back, we can see the effect is almost there. So at this point, I'm going to select everything and nest it all together and then add a slow zoom to make it even more engaging. Next, let's add some floating gold rings. So to save time, I just ripped this green screen footage of some spinning gold rings off of YouTube. But if you wanna create something from scratch, you could easily do so with Blender or another 3D program. But with that being said, I'll open up the gold ring green screen footage in After Effects, and then I'll keyframe the position so they're slowly moving up and down, creating a sort of floating effect. To avoid adding a bunch of additional keyframes, I simply use the loop out ping pong expression on my two position keyframes so the animation would continue on as long as I needed, like this. Now just export that out as a lossless alpha file and bring it back into Premiere Pro. Now we can place it below our rotoscope cover, remove the green screen background using the ultra key effect, and then duplicate it a few more times, spread them out, and then stagger their orientation so they aren't all moving together in unison because that would look unnatural. Now, once we're happy with the positioning of the rings, we can nest them all together and animate a mask along with our subject so the rings disappear as our subject skates past them. Then I just added some gameplay inspired text up top and a health meter to really finalize the effect. And finally, last but not least, I added some relevant sound design to really bring the animation to life. Now that's all the time we have for today, but if you wanna see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.